So with Munster doing it again, and with the Wallabies and the All Blacks being unable to decide on the winner after 80 minutes, got us thinking, what are your favourite games or the most memorable games decided by the smallest possible margin? We're talking one point, two points, no points. The games that really stand out as coming down to one key moment. Please send them our way. Uh, ones that come to mind, Henry Pollard's penalty in the semi-final last year, which I'm still trying to get over, um, and there must be plenty more out there. Loads of games that came down to just a moment, a tiny, tiny margin. Please send them our way and we'll read plenty out next week. So that's the only place to start, with the Wallabies and the All Blacks finally playing a test match, finally playing an international for the first time since the Six Nations were suspended way back at the start of the year. And a I mean, what a game to pick up on. What a game to come back to. I probably woke, not just my neighbours, but the entire population of the Midlands by just, probably the UK, uh, by shouting through those those incredibly tense, in genuinely just incredible last 10 minutes. I couldn't quite believe what I was watching. I don't think anyone could. So the, the All Blacks got out to a good start despite Australia playing some pretty good stuff with their really young team. Harry Wilson in particular I thought was fantastic on his first cap, uh, but there were plenty of those out there. Plenty of David Holmes really, really stepping up and a few coming up against the All Blacks as well. Um, however, Australia then got themselves back into it and then kicked the penalty through James O'Connor to go ahead with a few minutes to go. However, not to be outdone, the All Blacks equalised with one minute to go, Geordie Barrett kicking a penalty, and then, and, and then everything happened. And then the game went on for genuinely another nine or 10 minutes. Reese Hodge had an attempt that, that thundered properly off the post. Like that kick was, was actually flying. It was gonna smash through my neighbor's window despite coming all the way from Wellington. Um, she was not gonna be very happy. Uh, it was then regathered by Australia. They almost scored. It was turned over. The All Blacks almost went the distance. The All Blacks got down in the over 22. They almost scored. Australia tried to run it back. They knocked it on. The All Blacks played again. They kept going. They almost, they, they, they looked like they were going to score. They had an overlap. There's, there's, a, there's a slip. What was Australia turned it over? Then James O'Connor finally goes. Lads. Lads. I've got to get home this week. I've got things to do. I, 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 look, my mum's waiting in the car to pick me up. I've got to go. So finally puts the ball out behind his own try line, ending the game at 89 minutes, and it's one of the most memorable draws in rugby history. It was phenomenal. I couldn't believe what I was watching. It went from being a fascinating, really interesting test match into just a full drama. Unbelievable, and the best bit is they're going to do it all again next week as they face each other once again, this time at Eden Park itself. Elsewhere, because it's been a very busy week, we had the Premiership semi-finals. Now, Bristol put up a pretty good game against Wasps, and then Wasps pulled away. I mean, they were phenomenal. They were really, really impressive, having, you know, come kind of out of nowhere since just before lockdown, where they were kind of floating just outside the playoffs and they've shot themselves up. They secured second, and now they've secured a place in the final in two weeks' time, where they will face the Exeter Chiefs, who looked, once again, incredibly comfortable against Bath, who Bath, you know, challenged them a few times, challenged them a few places. Exeter looked completely unfazed and just saw themselves into that fifth straight final. I'm, I'm, I'm hugely excited by the prospect of that because I genuinely think Wasps might take it. You know, Exeter going is heavy, heavy favourites, but you wouldn't count Wasps out the way they're playing. It kind of reminds me of the Ospreys back, those two times where they hit an amazing patch of form at the end of the season and went on to win the league. I, I think they might have it in them, but Exeter remain heavy favourites as they are looking at the European final this weekend. Elsewhere in Europe, um, in France, Cheslin Colby has continued scoring tries. Uh, he, he does that every now and again. Uh, meanwhile, Munster won another game in the last minute with Ben Healy living his Ronan O'Gara dreams by kicking a winner in the last few minutes for a second week in a row. Uh, the Ospreys couldn't win this weekend. Congratulations to Munster for stopping uh, what was the Ospreys' longest winning run in two years. Uh, one game. Um, and the Cardiff Blues looked quite impressive. Glasgow saw the Scarlets, who you know put up a spirited comeback in the second half, but couldn't quite get there. Despite despite a, a dramatic, incredible score by the one and only Samson Lee on his 150th game for the club, throwing 
the greatest dummy since John Taylor in 1962 and going through to score himself. And things only got even bigger, even more exciting. We had so many things that honestly would have been the lead story in, in any other week as the Allianz Premier 15 started underway. So we finally have women's rugby back in Britain. And it was a big weekend. I mean, Harlequins were putting a particularly big win, winning 103-0. Um, but there was some really high quality rugby and virtually every game is being streamed online. So you can actually watch them all, including this week, Saracens had Hannah Bosman go and do the commentary herself. And I'll tell you what, that's worth checking out. She's got, she's got a solid career coming from her in that. And sticking with women's rugby, uh, there was one big headline in New Zealand as Portia Woodman, um, one of the most phenomenal finishers you've ever seen, did just that six times. She scored six times, breaking a record, scored six tries in one game. Portia Woodman, what a player. And speaking of people that make you go, what a player, uh, here's a quick look. Here's a quick look over a quick analysis of and recap of this week's Bledisloe Cup game. I don't know if there could have been a more fitting way to see Michael Hooper win his 100th cap. One of the best players of the last decade, there's always been a frantic spirit about Hooper that never ever dies, that never rests or lies down. He's quick, hardworking and relentless and always punching above his weight. And I think that perfectly sums up Sunday's test match, a fast, frantic game that would seemingly never quit, with Hooper's fingerprints all over it. It's quite hard to find a single frame of the game without Hooper visible on screen. His work rate and ability to cover the ground still, 100 games in, incredible. But this typically wasn't a one-man show. Hooper was part of one of the best opposite number head-to-heads of the year with fellow captain Sam Kane. This was Kane's first game as full-time All Blacks captain, and he really made his presence felt, with an astonishing 25 tackles zero missed. Kane doesn't so much bust his own gut as Hooper does as he busts yours if you dare go near him. It sounds like faint praise but Sam Kane is so competent. Every possible role you could want from an open side, Kane does with a plomb and did on Sunday with both captains giving their all until the final whistle eventually went on Tuesday. And much as Hooper has got up for virtually every Australia test since making his debut, the two teams now have to pick themselves up after their mutual heartbreak of the final half hour on Sunday and do it all again next week as the two sides meet at Eden Park, each eager to actually see it out as the winner this time. So last week we asked you for the best rugby debuts you could remember and a first shout comes in from Wayne Bernard I don't know if that's that's a referee under a suit yeah. under wind protection. Either way, hugely impressed by Herschel Yankees against Australia. Scored two tries last year and was generally excellent, forced his way on the bench for a World Cup final. Benjamin Dobbs mentions New Zealand South Africa winning their Rugby World Cup debuts. Again, pretty good winning the World Cup on, on your debut. Um, oh! Jean-Marc Dussain, who is of course the only player to ever make his debut in a World Cup final. I don't know why he didn't come to me last week, but that's as good as it gets. Richard Esley Jones has Sia Khaleesi coming on the fifth minute against Scotland in 2013. Man in the match performance in that game. Sia Khaleesi, man. Sia Khaleesi. Bunda Beer says Tondre Shivani has six tries against Uruguay. Again, like Portia Woodman, six tries. Tondre Shivani, huge young player, so I was always a huge fan of him. Um, WRU286 says Anthony Boutier against England earlier this year, where he did put in the best kick from open play you'll ever see, where he cleared, cleared the opposition five metre line from his own trial line. Max Chambers said Richie McCall, the only getting mad of the match on his debut. Again, Richie McCall goes to the Seacolese category category, just like, yeah, of course, he, of course he'd be phenomenal his debut. What you expect? Yeah, it's weird to think there's a time which Richie McCall was ever making his debut. Which you go, what a promising youngster this lad is, rather than just, yeah, here's the eternal All Blacks captain, one of the greatest players of all time. What a weird thought. Uh, Julian Tavea, yeah, you know, he only scored Three tries against Ireland, as Finlay Stewart brings up. It's okay, he can do better, you know. He's he's no Tom Dreyshaw Banger. He's no Portia Wooden. And you know what? I think that brings us to the end of another lovely edition of The Figure. It's been a very busy week. Please send us your best very tight games and we'll read some out next week. By which point, the All Blacks and the Wallabies will have played for another, presumably 80 minutes, but frankly, it could still be going on by the time you see this on the Tuesday. Thank you very much. I'll see you right then. Bye.